Hey everyone, chapter 5 of the Book of Boba Fett brought all kinds of goodies. An N1 Naboo Starfighter, the Darksaber, Imperial TIE Bombers, our first live action BD droid, oh, and the return of Mando and more Mandalorian lore. It was enough to make any Star Wars nerd go... <clears throat> but this is Star Wars music analysis, and all that aside, there's a problem here, and... We need to talk. Do it. At the end of chapter 4, the music basically told us that Mando was coming back when we heard his theme at the end when Shand and Fett were discussing hiring muscle. So, it came as no incredible surprise that Chapter 5 opens with Mando and his theme with the electric guitar glisses. And I'm not going to say I told you so, but, you know, just go watch my Chapter 4 video review. The whole scene starts off fairly quiet. There are soft drones and intermittent sounds in the background, but for the most part, this is a very quiet first scene, and that's going to become a theme throughout this episode. And. In addition to helping to hear any dialogue here, it gives us an immediately heightened sense of awareness. This is a tense scene. We're all waiting to see who makes the first move, and as soon as that first move is made, the music picks up with these drums, which typically tend to represent war and violence. Once the fighting is over, however, we immediately go back to this low, soft background standoff music. This whole scene is paced really well, both in terms of the action as well as the music. And I'm intentionally being sure to give some positive thoughts here because this video is going to take a turn to the more critical later on and what's likely the most important thing I've said yet on this channel, so make sure to stick around for that. The title card and Boba Fett's music remind us that we are still in the Boba Fett storyline which is needed already considering how excited we probably just all got to see Din and the Darksaber. And can we just take a second, not talking about music, to take note of how much the dynamic has changed? When season one of The Mandalorian came out, all we wanted to see was Boba Fett. But now that we're halfway through season one of The Book of Boba Fett, we can't stop getting excited about Din Djarin. I'm not going to go further with this thought because it's not music related, but food for thought. The Fett music is immediately followed by this new variation of Mando's theme. Orchestrationally, the woodwinds and light sustained strings give a very peaceful demeanor to this panoramic view. It's a nice contrast to everything in the opening scene and a lot of the epic dark string and brass sounds that Gorenson gives us. There's a slight imitation happening here as well between the flute and the violins. Listen to how the flutes echo each other and then the theme is continually picked up by the strings. Once we see Mando again though, the music changes again. A little more serious because remember, he's on a job and also not in his best form. Anyone else get the sense here that he might get jumped? Thank that quiet music if you did. Right after this, we get the awkward elevator ride that we've all experienced at some point. Well, maybe not while carrying a severed head, but still, awkward elevator rides. They're a part of life. The awkwardness is enhanced here by the lack of music and sound. Now, why do we feel a sense of awkwardness when there's silence? Here's my theory. We, as living beings, have an innate survival instinct. We don't like to feel vulnerable. One way that we feel more secure is to constantly move. Go ahead, try standing completely still the next time you're around people moving. It's uncomfortable because anything could be coming up behind you. We want that sense of moving so that it's not as easy for something to catch us from behind. And just stay with me on this. One of the principal sensations of music is movement and forward momentum. Whether it be through a syncopated rhythm or harmonic tension, you don't need to study music to feel this. Stop your favorite song right before the big dropper chorus. It's hard to ignore the urge for that music to continue forward. But when there is no music, we stop feeling that forward momentum. 
It's awkward and it's unsettling to our survival instinct. So tiny enclosed spaces with strangers and complete silence, not a comfortable moment. By not having music here, we feel that awkwardness to its fullest extent, even without the severed head. And of course, once Mando is off the elevator, we hear music again with a little bit of source music here. It feels like some sort of light music, very likely being canned or pre-recorded music since I don't see any performers or musicians anywhere. But tell me if you do and I'm just missing them. The thing I always love about source music is how it interacts with us as the characters move around the set. Listen to how as Mando leaves the first room, the music gets subtly quieter with him. Notice that most of the rest of this scene is completely without music. Mando is extremely vulnerable here and the music or lack of music does an incredible job of sharing that with us without foreshadowing anything that it won't be able to deliver on. I'm going to come back and talk about the story of the Great Purge and the Night of a Thousand Tears at the end because this is the scene that actually really set me off and it makes the most sense to talk about this at the end of the video. But after Mando reveals that he's well revealed his face, he's offered the chance at redemption within the living waters and the mines beneath Mandalore. Of course, with Mandalore being destroyed, this certainly poses an issue, but it's with this impossible challenge that Din Djarin sets off and his bass recorder motif sounds, which is why I think that this will be a key aspect of season three of The Mandalorian, along with maybe being trained on how to use the Darksaber by Master Skywalker himself. What do you all think? As Mando approaches the commercial cruiser here, we hear very light music in the background. This could easily have been a very tense scene with a Mandalorian being forced to remove all of their weapons. However, the music keeps the mood light by avoiding the initial downbeats of this two measure phrase. Here's a look at the drum beat we hear against the measure. By avoiding that initial downbeat, the music loses a certain amount of weight and we don't feel like impending doom is coming for this scene. It's simply a nice but subtle touch. Here's another awkward silence and then we get this moment of musical and self-reflection. One of my favorite musical moments in this episode is as Mando is inspecting his finished, or as finished as it's going to be, N1 Starfighter. Very softly, we hear his theme, but it's slow and calm. Being played by the strings instead of being pushed forward by brass and percussion like it oftentimes is. This gives us the sense that there actually is a connection between him and this ship, despite what he says about still wanting a Razor Crest. You get me a razor, Chris. You can have it right back. Oh, Bantha did all. The music allows us to feel that this ship was destiny for him. They were meant to be together. And something tells me that he isn't going back to a razor crest. Razor crest. And therefore, is also likely not returning to bounty hunting, since he won't be able to carry passengers in the N1. I'm pretty sure that the theme of this chapter is silence, but I like it. There's nothing like just hearing this N1 buzz, whir, and just go off. The music turns into a very victorious variation as he ascends into space. This is clearly going to be his baby for a long time to come. These musical cues are setting us up to have an emotional connection to this ship, unlike one we had for the Razor Crest. And as Mando lands, we see Fennec Shan track him down. When Mando realizes she's there on behalf of Fett, we hear Fett's inverted theme, the one I talked about in last week's episode in the background. It's just a subtle nod once again to what we already know and to what Mando just confirmed for us, but it's good to have here to make that connection. One of the most important aspects of a character's light motif is the ability for it to exist outside of their presence giving the storyteller more flexibility in how they shape the character's story arc. As Mando and the Armorer talk, she tells him some interesting things about Mandalorian history. As she does, we get this cutscene as we see Imperial TIE Bombers destroying pretty much every inch of Mandalore in the Great Purge. Now, every time that I watch this scene, I feel like I'm hearing the Force theme at the beginning. And I'm curious what you all think as well. Did you hear that there? We hear the first three notes of a minor scale, 
followed by a dropping down to the dominant or fifth scale degree. Ultimately though, I think this is just a coincidence and it would honestly make no sense in this scene, but it got me thinking. Why don't we hear a little Imperial March here? I mean, don't get me wrong, the music to this scene is dark, depressing, and everything we need to tell this story, but it's the Empire bombing Mandalore. If you want to talk about Imperial might, well, here it is folks. Why don't we hear some sort of Imperial theme in this mix? It would not be difficult at all for Gorenson to blend this in similar to how it's been used in the past. And you might be thinking, sure, it would be nice, but is it really necessary? And okay, I get your point, but let's think about what this episode brings us. We get Mandalorian lore, the Darksaber, a Naboo Starfighter, Beggar's Canyon, the service ramp that young Anakin launched off of, a BD-1 droid that may even be our little friend from Jedi Fallen Order, Imperial TIE Bombers, a mention of Grogu, and Mando himself. This episode is packed full of fan service, and I totally love it, but you can't even have one little Imperial March? One little bum 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 bum. In fact, there aren't any original tracks in the entire series, and now that I think about it, I'm not even sure if there were any in either season of The Mandalorian so far. And I just can't understand why. Is Disney trying to turn away from John Williams now that he's retired from Star Wars? Are they trying to just go in an entirely new direction? It's like they're trying to follow the path of Kylo Ren here and... It's time to let old things die. And I think personally it's complete Bantha diddle. These themes and motifs are what I grew up listening to. They're part of how I and so many of you learned to interpret the stories that we watched and the characters we saw. So Disney, if you're trying to abandon the music that Williams gave you, then you are making a huge mistake. I mean, I get that it's no longer Lucas's vision, but don't take John from us as well. This isn't the first time either. Remember Boba Fett's music from the original trilogy? Well, not anymore folks. We loved Boba Fett and these characters for what they were not what they're trying to make them into now. This also may just be Gorenson just trying to blaze his own path though, and there could be two reasons for this. One is that he just doesn't feel deserving of using what was left before him, and I can get that to an extent, but dude, we want it. The fans want the themes. Give us the theme like you give us other Easter eggs. It's just as important. The other possible reason is simply that Gorenson wants to go in his own personal way with the sound, blaze a new trail and make this his own, which personally I think is selfish. Star Wars will never belong to one person. Ryan Johnson already made that mistake. Please learn from Ryan if this is the case and get back to making Star Wars be Star Wars, even if you didn't come up with the theme on your own. I can't believe that we can have so many references to the prequels and the original trilogy all in one episode and yet everyone is so naive to not think that we should deserve a single theme from the John Williams era. This is total disrespect and if Disney and Lucasfilms don't begin to see that the music is just as important to the Star Wars universe as the rest of what it offers, then we are in trouble. And I will keep bringing this up. But if I keep going on this, I'm going to just have to start bleeping myself, so you tell me what you think in the comments. And I mean it here, tell me what you as the Star Wars community think. Has anyone else noticed this or felt musically gypped? Tell me what you think in the comments below and tell me if I've missed anything important in this episode. And before you go, please don't forget to like this video and subscribe to learn more about the music of the galaxy far, far away. And as always, may the be with you.